How come that so many people say that you admitted the crime? It's a lie. It's not about justice. It's about upholding the statistic. You did everything you could do, you know, so don't worry about that. I'm not done yet. The microphone. I give that to you? Yeah. I give this to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, I fail. In the summer of 2013, Dutch lawyer Renate Baumeester tells me about a young American man on death row. She is still in law school when she first hears about this Clinton Young, who is said to have committed two murders. He was sentenced to death. I heb Clinton for the first time met in 2011. Tijdens mijn rechtenstudie had ik te maken met mensenrechten en ik 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 zag online dat je kon schrijven met met mensen die te dood veroordeeld waren. Ik uh, zag dat, hij heel erg, hè, dat die mensen heel erg behoefte hadden aan contact met andere mensen buiten uh, het gevangenissysteem. Want daar is alleen contact natuurlijk met bewakers. Um, en zo ben ik eigenlijk bij Clinton terechtgekomen. I interview Clinton several times and discover it's not possible that he is the perpetrator in this terrible story. I then decide to make several documentaries about this. Me, David Page, Mark Ray. I've been here since 2003. I was 19 when I came to death row. I was 18 when I got the case right. And you're now? 30. 30. Yeah, I just turned 30 in July. It's kind of a depressing I milestone. I would have said congratulations, but it's <laughs> yeah, not really... Just, that's what I say. It was kind of a depressing milestone. I mean, half the time, I, at one point, I didn't think I was going to make it to 30. Mm -hmm. You know, and now that I made it, it's like, well, I spent all my 20s on death row, so... The deeper I dig, the more I'm convinced that he's on death row for a double murder he did not commit. They realize all the stuff I have in my favor and they don't want me to get it before the court because they don't want me to win. See, it's not about justice. It's about upholding the statistic. From when we met, I'm gripped by the question, is it even possible that he committed this crime? Clinton was sentenced to death based on the testimony of three co-defendants. There's no scientific evidence. There are no fingerprints, nor was his DNA found. He got shot in the head twice mm -hmm. and kind of close. The bullet holes were kind of close. There's no way he could have just pulled it out and, and shot like that. Because that's what they said. He pulled it out of his waistband, kept it there, and shot him from that point in, on this side of the head. Was he uh, uh, an expert shooter? No, he was 18. No. Okay. There's no way he could have shot like that and hit the person twice in the head. Because you have to be an expert? You'd have to do a lot of training. And at 18 years old, there's no way he could have done it. There's no possible way. Because bullets do not shoot around a corner. The net is closing more and more around his fellow suspect, David Page, who received a strikingly low prison sentence of 30 years for his involvement in the two murders. He always maintained Clinton did it. Good morning. I confronted him with all I uncovered in 2017 in a high security prison. Have a seat. So talking about the Doyle Douglas case, what what happened? Whenever we get to Longview to get some some weed, I get back in the car. As I'm getting back in the car, Clint shoots Doyle in the head twice. But in your first statement, you said the bullets were on the right of his head, right? I, that's why I would get because it, it was like this. One's probably going to hit him here. The other one probably hit him there. I don't, I don't know exactly where they hit him. I just know they hit him somewhere in that journal vicinity. Yeah, they hit him in the left. They, I, they couldn't have hit him in the left. That's, that's in the papers. Couldn't what have. Had him in the left. Couldn't have. I'm pretty sure. 
he told me all sort. Of, he said a bunch of stuff he shouldn't have said. How where they did it out at a pump jack on a lease road. I mean, he told he told us everything. And I know that they were cutting through the deal as far as for testify against Clinton. You know what I'm saying? Then how did you know about a deal? About what? You said I knew he had a deal, but how did you know? Because he was uh, telling people. You know what I'm saying? Like he got like. He didn't, I think, say like 40 or 30 years ago, plea agreement, you know what I'm saying, to testify against Clinton. Good morning, folks. Come to find that Welcome aboard Southwest Flight 2222 on our way to Midland, Odessa. I'm on my way to Midland, West Texas. Gloves were found near the second victim. The gloves were tested on the inside for DNA. Only David Page's DNA was found. New scientific evidence proves that the person wearing the gloves was also the shooter in the second killing. Conclusion, David Page fired the shots. I have it here. Oh, do you? Yeah, do you want to look at it? I'll have to go get my glasses. Yes, please do, please do. I present the new results to Jeff Marouk. As a police officer, he was closely involved with Clinton's case. This is it. So, I think page six. Okay. It's interesting. I assume that they're on the outside of the gloves? Yes. Okay. They tested the inside before, and it showed uh, only David Page's DNA. Oh, okay. They, they could exclude Clinton uh, from 100%. From the gloves? Yes. Okay. Uh, and now they tested uh, the outside, um, and the conclusion is, is that uh, someone uh, fired a, a gun with right. it. And the only one who wore the, those gloves was Page. Was Page, yeah. Were you wearing gloves that night? I had bought some, yes. Why? Because it was cold. It was 11 degrees. Hmm? It was 11 degrees or 11 Celsius. It was cold. It was, there wasn't no 11 degrees of it. We were all wearing jackets. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Paige is lying about the gloves. First, he says he wasn't wearing any. Then he says he used them for gardening. And then because his hands were cold. But Page told fellow prisoners a very different story. I've interviewed some of the people that said Page uh, bragged that they'd never pin it because he's on him because he was wearing gloves and that he's bragging about getting by with something Clint did or Clint's getting charged with something that he did, mm -hmm. that Page did. He definitely don't deserve to be on death row, I know that. How sure are you that he's not the shooter? How sure? I mean, the dude David Page told 100%. David Page told me he was wearing gloves. He hit him in his truck. That's why he didn't have no gunpowder, gun residue on his hands. The only th reason I can think of, and forgive me if this is too um, short sighted, but the only thing I could think of is that they offered you the deal because you were the killer and they wanted to close the, the case. They wanted to have this capital murder. You're wrong. So that didn't happen? No, ma'am. Hi, allemaal. Ik ben Renate Bouwmeester um, en ik ben jurist. Um, jullie zijn hier vanavond mede voor de lancering van de Stichting de Clinton Young Foundation, die naar aanleiding van de uh, documentaire van. We keep fighting for attention for his case as the execution date draws closer. I give lectures and appear on talk shows while Renate starts the Clinton Young Foundation. Mensen benaderden mij omdat ik uh, natuurlijk een vriendschap had met Clinton en vroegen wat zij konden doen om Clinton te helpen. Um, ik heb toen een stichting opgericht, dat is in 2014 de Clinton Young Foundation is dat geworden. En met de Clinton Young Foundation wilden we aandacht vragen voor Clintons zaak en voor andere mensen die te dood veroordeeld zijn. En geld inzamelen, omdat geld wel eens heel, een hele erg belangrijke rol zou kunnen gaan spelen in de zaak van Clinton. We wilden met dat geld rechtsbijstand inschakelen, goede advocaten op zijn zaak proberen te krijgen. En we hebben heel veel geld kunnen inzamelen. En dat is denk ik cruciaal geweest. Welkom terug bij de Zomer met Arts. Jurist Merel Pontier verhuist zaterdag naar Texas... om de ter dood veroordeelde Clinton Young bij te staan in de rechtszaal. Ik ga voor een eerlijk proces. Dat is denk ik het belangrijkste. Want daar heeft hij recht op. En ik, ik stel gewoon vast, en Jessica ook en heel veel anderen... dat hij dat eerlijk proces niet heeft gehad. Dus daar, daar strijd ik voor. 
Meanwhile, another Dutch lawyer saw our film and decided to join the foundation. Merel Pontier is gripped by this case and all the people that are wrongly convicted on death row that she, as a lawyer, decides to move to Texas. Merel, jij vliegt dus overmorgen naar Texas om daar te gaan studeren en om Clinton van dichtbij te helpen. Ja, dat klopt. Een ja. bijzondere stap. Ja, zeker. Ja. Ja, voor mij uh, is het mijn passie geworden eigenlijk om, uh, om te doodvoordeelden te helpen. En ik heb nu besloten inderdaad om te gaan studeren in Texas, zodat ik daar advocaat kan worden en me kan focussen op de doodstraf. Ik zag de documentaire die jij hebt gemaakt in 2014, Code Rood, de doodstraf. En toen zat ik nog uh, op de rechteropleiding in Rotterdam. En toen zag ik die documentaire en ja, dat, dat raakte mij wel om hem daar te zien zitten als 30-jarige jongen. Um, en hij zei dat hij geen eerlijk proces had gehad en dat hij onschuldig vast zat. En dat bleef een tijdje in mijn hoofd zitten nadat ik dat had gezien. En toen dacht ik um, op een gegeven moment, ik ga hem gewoon een brief sturen. Um, en dat heb ik gedaan en een paar weken later stuurde hij mijn brief terug. You've arrived at your destination. 1903, 1905, deze is het dan. I'm meeting Ronnie Bearden. As the deputy sheriff in Midland, he attended Clinton's court case. That was, in the 11 years I was there, that was the only death penalty case that we, that, that our court had. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Mr. Bearden. How are you? I'm good. Nice meeting you. Do you think that he deserves a new trial? Yes. And do you think he will get one? No. Why not? Because the when the system gets to rolling, it usually does not roll backwards. Has been my experience. So that would mean that someone would be put to death for something he didn't do. That's correct. And people would be okay with that? Not this people. Not me. But there's nothing I can do about it. I don't know if justice was done here or not. But I think Paige got off light, lightly. And I know that our, again, our system of justice allows for the plea bargain and, and make a deal type thing. And that's exactly what Paige did. Yeah, he took a deal. Yeah, he took a pretty good deal too. Meanwhile, Clinton's execution date, the 26th of October, 2017, is drawing closer. Despite the huge amount of evidence, it looks like the justice system will have him killed regardless. I visit him a few days before his scheduled execution. Um, oh, we only have five minutes. Okay. <sighs> yeah, it should have been more than five minutes. Leave okay. it. Um, <sighs> yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, thank you. I, I thank you for everything that you've done, you know. I appreciate it. you opening a lot of doors for me. And, uh, You're so welcome. <laughs> Put up with me. <laughs> <laughs> Putting up with you. Yeah, I thought you yeah, would. Uh, well, yeah, you helped me a lot. You, you have to survive to apologize for that. <laughs> Already, yeah. I, you owe me some. <laughs> Already, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you made my life better, so I thank you. I mean, you know, you've helped me. And That's completely likewise. Chances, so, I mean, you did everything you could do. You know, so don't worry about that. I'm not done yet. I know, so that's what I'm saying. It, it ain't over with. But um, thank you for all you've done Take for me. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Right, right. Then, eight days before he's supposed to be executed, we unexpectedly receive good news. Jessica, I bedoel, you've been here the first time when you did this case, when you for the documentary. You have it jarenlang gevolgd, and ook op Facebook bijvoorbeeld. <laughs> ik zag je wanhoop, ik zag ook je vastberadenheid, en er komt vandaag het bericht eigenlijk. Er yeah. komt een nieuwe hoorzitting. Ja, yeah. 16 is afgewend. Afgewend. Yeah. Yeah. Wat gebeurt er dan met jou? 
Ja. Ja, totale ontlading. Ik heb geschreeuwd, ik heb gehuild. Uh, ik heb zijn familie natuurlijk aan de lijn gehad. Update uh, this afternoon. Clinton Young is no longer on death row. Young was convicted for a double murder in Midland nearly 20 years ago in 2001. Just this afternoon, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals tossed Young's murder conviction and death sentence. Court documents reveal that one of the prosecutors representing the state in Young's trial, Ralph Petty, was also employed as a judicial clerk for the late Judge John Hyde at the time. The appeals court says because of the previously unknown employment between the prosecutor and judge, Young was denied the right to a fair trial and an impartial judge. In augustus 2019 kwam aan het licht dat Ralph Betty, de assistent officier bij Justitie, 17 jaar lang, terwijl hij een enorm belangrijk onderdeel was in uh, het team van het OM, van het Openbaar Ministerie, en Clinton als zodanig vervolgde, tegelijkertijd ook als juridisch medewerker voor de rechter in Clintons zaak heeft gewerkt. En in die hoedanigheid ook de rechter advies heeft gegeven, toegang had tot alle vertrouwelijke stukken in die zaak en ook vonnissen en uitspraken heeft geschreven. Dus die man had een enorme dubbelrol. Dus de, eigenlijk was het OM en de rechterlijke macht waren gewoon één en dezelfde. Dus Clinton heeft nooit, nooit een eerlijk proces gehad, want dit begon op het moment dat Clinton al was gearresteerd. En dat is uiteindelijk doorgegaan tot het moment uh, dat hij bijna werd geëxecuteerd. Dus die dubbelrol heeft 17 jaar lang plaatsgevonden. Dus Clinton heeft nooit een eerlijk proces gehad. En dat was echt een understatement. Hij heeft absoluut geen eerlijk proces gehad. On the 29th of October 2021, Clinton is finally taken off death row. After 19 years in solitary confinement, no human contact and next to no fresh air, he's transferred to a mild prison in Midland, the town where he was convicted. He's taken on a new lawyer, the renowned and feared Dick de Guerin. What did you think when you first looked at the case? Well, I thought that here's a guy who's been railroaded and uh, he hasn't lost his fight and he wants uh, to be heard and he needs to be heard and he never got a fair trial in the first place. And when I looked at uh, the work that had been done by the lawyers in California, the assistant federal public defenders, uh, and it was tremendous work, uh, I knew that uh, this is a case that really needs to be tried fairly with a fair jury and uh, prosecutors that don't cheat. And that means he shouldn't be sitting in a stinking jail which is punishment uh, for a crime that he hasn't been now convicted of. Then, out of the blue, on Wednesday the 19th of January 2022, we're told about an important hearing on this day that will determine whether Clinton Young may be released on parole. We try to follow the hearing online, but we struggle. Als de veroordeling ongeldig wordt verklaard, dan word je teruggeplaatst naar zo'n county jail en dan heb je recht op een borgtocht. En bij Clinton was die in de eerste maanden nog niet vastgesteld en daar waren we eigenlijk op aan het wachten om te kijken of we hem op borgtocht vrij konden krijgen. Dus vorige week, vrijdag. Um, toen werd duidelijk dat er eindelijk een hoorzitting was gepland waarin die borgtocht zou worden bepaald. Um, dus dat was, was nog super spannend, want een officier bij Stitcher die kan zeggen: Ik ben uh, het er niet mee eens. Ik, hij kon zelfs zeggen: Ik zou willen dat hij geen borgtocht krijgt. En met de capital murder charge die Clinton had, zou de rechter ook nog die borgtocht in het geheel kunnen afwijzen. Dus hij zou kunnen dat hij helemaal niet vrij zou kunnen komen op borgtocht. Hey joh, hou het. Dat zou wel dus dat was nog even spannend, want ik dacht, ja, gaat het nou wel of niet gebeuren? Het kan zijn dat het gewoon helemaal wordt afgewezen. En we weten niet hoe die officier bij justitie erin staat. En zijn juridische team had gevraagd voor een borgtocht van 75.000 dollar. Dat is heel laag, zeker voor de charges die hij nog heeft. Meestal zitten mensen met zo'n charge vast met een borgtocht van een aantal miljoen. Een borgtocht krijg je later weer terug op het moment dat je steeds komt opdagen voor zittingen die je hebt. 
Dus het is een garantie naar de rechtbank toe dat je niet gaat vluchten en dat je blijft komen opdagen. En de rechter heeft toen de borgtocht op 150.000 dollar gezet. En dat is, dat is echt heel laag. Thanks to Wi-Fi, I can keep in touch with Merel during our flight to the US. We expect the paperwork is going to take a day or two, after which Clinton will be released. Early in the morning, I receive a message. Merel can pick him up right now. That was for me was echt het moment dat ik me realiseerde, oké, okay, hij komt vrij. Toen ben ik heel vroeg daarheen gaan rijden om hem uit de jail te halen. En ja, ik moest natuurlijk ook een appartement voor hem regelen. Um, allerlei spullen die hij had, hij had letterlijk niks. Hij heeft twintig jaar in de gevangenis gewoond, dus hij had niet eens kleding. Uh, dus ik moest allerlei spullen wilde ik voor hem hebben. Appartement heel snel geregeld waar hij zou kunnen verblijven. Dus om acht uur s ochtends, toen het open ging, belde ik de pretrial services. En ik zeg, joh, ik ben onderweg naar Midland om hem op te halen uit de jail. Um, wat moet ik precies doen? Toen zei ze, um, nee, dat gaat niet door vandaag. Dus Mart stond even stil. En ik zeg, hoe bedoel je, gaat niet door vandaag? Zegt ze, nee, we gaan hem, uh, je kan hem er niet uithalen. En ik zeg, nou... Dat kan niet, want we hebben een order van een judge. Jullie gaan niet die order van die judge negeren. Dus ik heb meteen iedereen gebeld die daarvan op de hoogte moest zijn. En um, twee uur later, ik was nog steeds naar Midlands aan het rijden, belde ik weer. Ze namen me op en ik zeg, oké, okay, één vraag. Zijn jullie er nog hetzelfde in als vanmorgen? Gaan jullie hem, mij nog steeds niet toelaten om hem op te halen? Zeiden ze, oh ja, nee, je kan hem uh, ophalen. Ja, je moet uh, gewoon naar de jail gaan. Uh, zorg dat je die bonding papers hebt. En um, hij moet zorgen dat hij die enkel monitor heeft. Um, en uh, ja, zodra die bonding papers zijn ingediend, uh, dan bel je ons en dan uh, komen wij die enkel monitor afleveren en dan uh, kan je hem ophalen. Suddenly she messages me. She can pick him up right now. Uh, we hebben binnen. Ze heeft de stiekem gevuld. Je ziet. Pick out some things. But it's the people here. Am I on the screen? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. All right, so now it's recording? Okay. See, look. What is that? You're on live. I'm on live. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi. Hey, Facebook. what's up, everybody? Hey, Facebook. Hey, everybody. Learning how to use iPhone. It's recording now. First day. Walking into my apartment. <laughs> so I got 
got trespassed. I people burglarized my apartment. <laughs> okay, good to see you. <laughs> so we're just here uh, renting our car. So we'll be uh, on our way in, uh, I think. No, we're in Dallas now. Dallas, yes. What? All right, we're gonna drive the way. Five hour drive. Okay, Bye. see you. Bye. Bye. Too close to the camera. Oh, that's not a good shot of me. Let's learn how to take a that turn. Good angles. Oh, angles. Okay, like that. Oh. Um. Uh, get the hang of everything. Hey, look, I got a photo bomb of Meryl. <laughs> what, uh, what's that now? See up there? It's recording. It's recording? Okay. And so the video's recorded. I'm blocking out. He worked his iPhone. Um. Okay. Yeah. It's been an emotional roller coaster today. Um. I thank everybody for donating and stuff like that. Uh, those who continue to donate, you know, uh, cost a lot of money to bond me out, so. But, uh, I'm out, you know, 20 years, finally off death row. But, uh, I got to hug my baby sister for the first time since she was 11 years old. My sister. <laughs> uh, of course, I got this damn ankle monitor. So I gotta stay on that for a while. Uh, no, I'll be posting more stuff in the future. This, right now, my mind's. <laughs> um, all right, I'll take care. Dat hij heel blij is. Ja. Yeah. Ik weet zelf, morgen aan de telefoon was hij wel. Uh... En gespannen. Ja, hij zegt het ook steeds, dat hij ja. heel anxious is. Ja. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> See, look, y'all. Plugging in my little ankle monitor here. Make sure it's fully charged. And then I get to figure out an iPhone. How am I gonna plug in a wall? How are you gonna do that? I don't know. You gotta figure it out. No come with instructions. What is this right here? What's that? Oh no, that's the key for the SIM card. That's what that is. That's the key for oh. the SIM card. <laughs> of course I will. Yeah, where are you? <laughs> yes, yes. But first, we have to locate you. Hi. Hey, what's up, baby? Hey, hey. you're out. Yeah. Oh. Hey, what's up? You did it. You're out. <laughs> oh. A different way of greeting you normally, <laughs> right? Already, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> Good to see you. You too, huh? <sighs> Finally, huh? Yeah. <sighs> so good to see you. Ja, dat ja, het is ja heel vreemd natuurlijk. Dat is. Ja, we zijn sinds 2009 vrienden en je hebt elkaar alleen achter glas gezien. En ja, het is, het is... Ik heb nooit gedacht dat ik Clint een knuffel zou kunnen geven. Of dat, dat we samen een kop koffie zouden kunnen drinken. Um, dus ja, het was een heel... Ik, ik besef het nog steeds niet. Oh, wat bijzonder. Yeah. We did it. Leuk, <laughs> man. Hey. Hi. How are you? How are you? Good to see you. It's been a day, huh? Yeah, it has. How you feel? 
I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Oh, wow. Yesterday was emotional. It was. Yeah, awesome. we've seen it. We've seen it. <laughs> my goodness. Learn how to do my iPhone. <laughs> hey, Carla. Hi. Miss you. Oh, I'm so happy for you. I recognize you against the door. Yeah, I recognize you too. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> It's the first time I've got to get a picture with you and Meryl, too. Yes, Natalie. Hello, Meryl. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Look, I don't know how to oh. work this. Get over here, Meryl. Over here. It's so great that you're all the first thing you've made, and that it's helemaal not... But you beseft it nog niet, hè? Ook al staat hij. Yeah. No, nee, it's really It's really awkward. So, where's your new uh, jewelry? Yeah. Is it annoying, or is it heavy? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's uh, starting to... Annoying it is, but is it heavy? Make. Yeah, see, the thing is, it's like... See, I got wide ankles. See, that's the scars oh. from the shackles. Oh. That's from the shackles. Oh. So that's just the uh, wear and tear. They got it slipped. When I go in Tuesday, they're supposed to give me like a slip. Oh, okay. So you got a new one. I can one. slide up. No, I slide up underneath it, right? Oh, that's better. Yeah. yeah. But... It's kind of hard to go to sleep with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It looks heavy. Yeah. I ain't that heavy. It ain't that bad. It's just bulky, you know? And, and do you have to go uh, back and forth to some office to just yeah, on a, make yourself uh, known or? On a matter of fact, this is my little slip. So I have to be there about 10.30 a.m. on the 25th, so okay. Tuesday. So every week? Or? Every week, so they can monitor to make sure I ain't tampered with it. Okay. And then, then they check your uh, urine or they no, do it? No, they just, yeah, they, they, they track me everywhere. They, uh, like I have to keep a log right here. Yeah. Of um. Everything I do. Oh, you worry about like when I leave. Right now, I don't have no work schedule. I have to create a. I have a paper right there. I have to create a work schedule. But can you leave? Well, if I create a work schedule, the oh. thing is, is pretrial. Um, they tell me one thing with the judge order. I'm getting different things from different people. So, mm -hmm. the judge signed the order so I could go shopping, for example. Yeah. But they told me I couldn't go shopping. Oh. They said it was whatever's in the judge's order, and so it's just. I got to just get with the main people. I'm having my lawyers get with them so I can set the schedule up through my lawyers. Yeah. That way I have a... Then they sign it off. But I just want to make sure my lawyers do it. That way I got a paper trail and everything. No, I can't I, imagine yeah. you don't want that. Clinton will stay in Midland because that's where he has to report every week. His family is a seven hour drive away, so he depends entirely on his lawyers and the supporters of his foundation who help him buy his daily groceries. Uh, when persons are released on bail, they're on their own. They have restrictions on their bail, where they can go, who they can see, uh, what they can do, but uh, as far as help with matters such as getting groceries, such as figuring out how to get three square meals a day, there's, there's nothing of that. So he was basically, thank goodness he had his foundation and people that were supporting him and his mother and sister, which were of a great benefit to him. Now, as lawyer, I can only do so much. Uh, to deal with the court and get the right orders in place, but we can't really be there to hold his hand. His world is really not that free, of course. He's basically under house arrest, and he can go to church or uh, he's not going to go to school, but uh, that would have been allowed, and he can go to a grocery shop or shop for clothes and to look for work and to work, but that's it. My first trip out since I've been on house arrest. Uh, I'm gonna take a trip to see my attorney, right? So they said it's okay that I don't need permission because they'll see where I'm going. So either I'm gonna get back or <laughs> we're gonna get pulled over and I'm gonna go to jail. We'll figure it out something. Though. All right.
I'm always gonna have this monitor hanging over me. And so that's gonna add stress to everything. Like I gotta get from point A to point B within a set amount of time. If I don't, they can violate me. I can't go 150 feet past the apartment. If I do, they can violate me. You know, I'm worried about it damaging or messing up and them thinking I done it or something like that. Like it stopped working and then I not know because there's no, there's no light on it. There's nothing that tells me I plug my, my charger up and a light comes on. But other than that, there's nothing telling me that it is on. And so like, I don't know if it stopped working right now. And then, you know, if something happens, are they gonna blame me? You know, I don't think they're gonna ask a lot of questions. I think they're gonna lock me up and then figure it out. And so, you know, I, they could still, in theory, send me back to death row. And so all the extra pressure of, you know, I have to make, I have to show people that I can be a productive citizen in society, you know? And how long can this uh, theoretically Until my take? trial? Oh, how long, oh, I thought you were saying, how long could the monitor be on me? to my trial, but it could take a year or two years. I mean, it's a massive case and there's a lot to go through. You're gonna find that spot right there and you click on it. Okay. Move out of the way, Jesse. Please. And you come over here. Look. Hang on. And you click on that spot right there. And then you go back to the center. Okay. What's that say? 11. 11 feet 6 inches. Okay. So, how so do I... clear it. Okay, Let me clear show it. you. Okay. So. And then. Okay. Yeah. So, so go to, from the the door. Where are you coming for me? Go to the door down to the end of the stairs. Oh, there we go. Okay. Wait. Now go down to the end of the banister and touch the to the end of the banister and you'll know how many feet that is. that yeah so I just sit here in my little my little charging station you know <laughs> while I get refilled <laughs> hij heeft natuurlijk de enkelband om nu um, hij mag niet uh, zijn appartement mag hij eigenlijk niet uit hè? Je, echt, nou, je hebt gezien dat we met elkaar aan het meten waren of die de overkant van de straat zou kunnen bereiken... omdat daar een supermarkt zit waar die graag naartoe zou willen. En we komen samen tot de conclusie dat die supermarkt waar die dus elke dag naar kijkt... net iets te ver weg is. En dan denk ik, je bent vrij, maar je bent niet vrij. Hallo? Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, I, uh... I, uh, I was attempting to measure... Like, it's 150 feet from the apartment, correct? Okay, so I was measuring from like this morning. I mean, I'm sure y'all, you can see all the thing. I was measuring from here to the car with my phone and uh, to the street and everything. Everything in this little area right here seems to be within 150 feet, so. Okay. Oh, yes ma'am, yes ma'am, yes ma'am. I just wanna, I, <laughs> y'all look. <laughs> I ain't trying to have no mistakes or mishaps. <laughs> yes ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, you too. Bye bye. See you Tuesday. Bye. Mensen zijn heel erg blij, want Clinton is vrij. Maar wij zien hier inderdaad wat ik. Ja, hij, hij, hij is vrij omdat hij uit de gevangenis is. Maar als de definitie van vrij is waar hij nu zit, hij is niet vrij. Hij, 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 hij is zo beperkt in wat hij kan, in wat hij mag. En. Ik vraag me af in hoeverre je dan kunt spreken van een leven na de gevangenis. Want wat me heel erg opvalt is dat Texas hem vrij heeft gelaten. Maar vervolgens aan zijn lot overlaat. Yeah, a little bit more water. Okay, that's a... 
Er is niemand die, die, die hem op weg helpt. Clinton heeft vanaf zijn achttiende vastgezeten, twintig jaar lang. Hij moet alles opnieuw leren. Hij, hij, hij weet niet hoe de wereld nu is. Ja, en ik heb precies hetzelfde als jij hoor. Het is inderdaad, hij is fysiek vrij, maar mentaal misschien meer gevangen dan ooit. Ja. Want hij ruikt alle mogelijkheden. Ja. Hij kijkt ernaar en hij mag het allemaal niet aanraken. Nee. Wij voelen dat die vrijheid zo relatief is. Ja, ik used to being in prison. I'm used to, as sad as that is, I mean. Now I'm out here, so I'm sitting here anxious, like worried that you know they're gonna come get me and take me back, right? Are you really worried about that? Yeah, because I mean it's just I have stuff to lose now. You know, so that's what that's the anxiety, right? One question I've never asked him, but thought about a lot, is how he felt about my interview with David that set things in motion. Clinton watched the footage with his lawyer at the time. Look, I was glad because my lawyers was against you talking to him. Yeah, but they're generally against the media, right? And the reason why I was for it, because I remember an Anthony Graves, who was a guy who was exonerated, the evidence that got him out was his DA talk to the media and admitted something. And so I was like, you know, maybe he'll admit something to her that he won't admit to attorneys. And he opened up more to you than he did the attorneys. And so, but in your first statement, you, you know, I do like being right. <laughs> I, that's why I was getting, because he was like this. I was glad, you know, uh, it allowed the world to be able to see him. I don't know exactly where they hit him. I just know they hit him somewhere in that journal vicinity. And also, for the first time, it was on video of how Doyle Douglas was positioned when he was shot. Because in the trial testimony, it doesn't adequately show it. It's only black and white, it's only words on paper. But here it is on video now, saying, hey, you know, um, this is how it was done. This is how he was positioned. This is how he was shot. So I mean, well, this is how he was positioned, which, again, validated what I said and validated my ballistics. And so, I mean, it's, it's, it's beneficial. You know, so I mean, I was glad, right? Uh, I didn't expect him to be as creepy as he was, right? for you to say goodbye to some of your friends on death row? That was kind of hard at first because it had been my life. You know, it's what I'd known. And so I was leaving the place that I knew for, you know, the last 18 and a half years. So that was kind of emotional, right? But um, pretty much everybody was, for the most part, was happy to see me leave, to see somebody win, you know? Gives them hope as well. Yeah, 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 it does. And, uh, it's good because it shows them that, you know, that, it's possible to win. You just got to keep looking. You got to keep fighting. Clinton's family lives in East Texas, a seven-hour drive from Midland. He'd love to be there, but he can't leave Midland, so that's not an option. Luckily, he does have permission to visit his family every now and then. Yeah. Bye. Love you. Love you too, Mom. Bye. All right, bye, y'all. <laughs> hey, it was nice to meet you. It was nice to meet you. Safe travel. <sighs> Right? Yeah, well, you're so welcome. Yeah. It's been worth the ride, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's been a journey, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ik denk dat niemand heeft beseft waaronder ik dat, dat het ooit zou gaan lukken. Um, um, mijn gedachte is altijd geweest: als je weet dat 
dat een vriend van je zou kunnen gaan sterven... en je weet dat er een hele kleine kans is... dat jij iets zou kunnen doen of kunnen betekenen... om ervoor te zorgen dat diegene blijft leven... dan, dan, dan probeer je dat. En dus we zijn blijven proberen. En, en ik, ik denk dat niemand mij voor gek heeft verklaard... omdat ze dachten, het lukt toch niet. Hij heeft het... Natuurlijk aan heel veel mensen te danken die heel veel voor hem hebben gedaan. Jij hebt die documentaires gemaakt waardoor mensen met eigen ogen konden zien... wat er allemaal mis is gegaan in deze zaak. Renate heeft de stichting voor hem opgericht. Um, maar uiteindelijk is het zijn eigen wilskracht geweest... Um, waardoor hij zover is gekomen. Hij heeft vanaf het begin dat hij de dodencel in werd gebracht... heeft hij gezegd... Dit accepteer ik niet. Dit gaat niet gebeuren. Dus het is uiteindelijk ook echt zijn eigen wilskracht geweest. Um, waardoor hij dit resultaat heeft kunnen bereiken. En tegelijkertijd is hij ook bevoorrecht. Want er is niemand um, op Texas Death Row die zo'n stichting heeft... Uh, waarmee geld kan worden ingezameld. En die drie documentaires heeft. En die zoveel support heeft van people all over the world. En... En dat is ongekend. En dat hebben heel veel mensen gedaan. En dat hebben heel veel mensen hebben daar heel hard voor gewerkt om dat voor elkaar te krijgen. Maar al die mensen zijn geïnspireerd door hem. En zijn geïnspireerd door zijn wilskracht. Dus ik denk dat het een, een hele mooie combinatie is van zijn eigen harde werken en vechten. En heel veel mensen die achter hem staan en heel veel voor hem hebben gedaan om dat resultaat te bereiken. Mooi wat een community kan doen hè, als ze samenwerken. Ja. Hey everybody. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. Probably not. Yeah, I don't think y'all can see it on the phone. But uh, it's the first time I've seen stars since 2009. That's what I'm doing. I'm looking up at the stars. Uh, I was like, damn. <laughs> I forgot to look at the stars, right? You know, it's a simple thing. But, uh, kind of means something when you ain't seen them in 11 or 12 years. Man, life is beautiful. Yeah.